Hello, welcome to Talk Bowling, episode number nine. I'm John Conga. I'm Tony Ruka. And I'm Ryan Alstrom. Talk Bowling is proud to be bringing you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates on the largest internet website, bowlingball.com. Very good. Very good. Hey. Uh, we're back. Yes, we are. We took a few weeks off for Christmas and New Year's. A little hectic day today, so yeah. we're back though. Hope everyone had a very good holidays and a happy New Year. All right, long one to come. <laughs> Let's see, today we're going to talk about pin length. We get a lot of questions from the people who they get a ball that's, say, zero to one inch pin. They take it to their ball driller. They don't want to drill it. Um, talk about standard pin lengths. Yeah. And some of our pro pins that are actually longer than, I guess, standard. Longer than the average. Yeah. Right. And there's still some, I guess, a little bit of misconception in the industry with pro shops not thinking you only need a two to three inch pin or a three to four inch pin to make the ball do something. Right. So we're just going to kind of hopefully clear that up for some people that, uh, that have questions on that. So we have three balls in front of us. Uh, starting on this side, we have, uh, I believe, a shorter pin. It's, it's one to two or one and a half to two yeah. on the box. Uh, then we have a three to four. And then this is going to be what's called a pro pin. This is a Storm product. And we, we deal exclusively with pro pins. Yes. So we do get a lot of questions on how to drill those. Uh, basically, I guess the average is two to three. Yeah, the average the average pro shop is going to see anywhere between two to four. Right there, right. and and ball companies do try. Uh, they're getting more and more advanced, and they are trying to keep those pins specified. But occasionally, you're going to get one that's a little longer, a little shorter. And we just want to let you know you can still drill it. Now, some of our customers say that the shorter and the longer are seconds or blunts. Is that true? No, no. Ball companies, everyone's on the up and up now. They're a while ago. Companies maybe tried to sneak it throughout, or or the big misconception was internet sites only sold seconds mm -hmm. and blends. All seconds and blends are very clearly marked. No one releases one without it. You're going to know it. There's going to be an X. There's going to be something on the ball. You're going to know it's a second or a blend. So there's the pin distance has nothing to do with that. Right. Uh, when you get a shorter pin, it's as good as a longer pin or something right in the middle. Now, from our standpoint, it, it's often a ball driller just not not being familiar with that type of pin distance or how to drill It that. could be, or they're just more comfortable. Uh, it's it's a little easier to drill, you know, when you have a two to three inch pin, if you don't know all the technical aspects of the ball, you can usually make that ball work easily enough. Sure. But it is, the main factor comes down to that we want to talk about is the fact that it, the main thing is pin distance from your positive axis point. Right, that's going to determine how much the ball is going to Right. It's not going to matter if it's a one inch pin, a five inch pin, you're talking if you're if you're going to say five inches from your positive axis point, the pin's going to fall obviously higher or lower in your grip, but for the most part the ball reaction will be very similar. Right. It will get a little stronger, right, as you get the pin lower in your grip. It's going to get a little earlier, and then the opposite, a little little longer, a little more length as it gets higher. But overall, that pin distance is what's going to matter. Right. And I know we've had a few people ask us that does a ball with a longer pin have more or right. less than a ball with a shorter pin, thinking that. When they receive balls with a zero to one inch pin, they're saying this ball will not hook and it's no good. Right. Uh, that's that's just not true. Depending on where you put that pin in relation to your positive axis point, right. that's different for everybody. That's going to determine how much your ball is going to hook. Gotcha. And right. the other big factor, maybe just to throw in real quick on on some of the the newer balls, I guess upper mid, even some of the mid performance and high performance balls that have mass bias placements, CG placement doesn't really matter. So in theory, pin distance doesn't matter at that point because it's, it's your pin in relation to your axis and then the mass bias in relation to your axis or your grip, whatever you're going to use to do that. But those are the two points that matter. Then you just you let that CG fall where it falls. If you have to put an extra hole in it, you put an extra hole in it. Because static weight is going to be the exactly. least, least important variable when drawing the ball. Right. So really, when it really comes down to it on a high performance ball, pin CG placement just doesn't matter. It, it, there's videos out there where I think we've even talked about it. There's, mm -hmm. Uh, Brunsnick has some good videos right. that show different CG placements with pin placements, and it just doesn't affect ball motion at all. Right. We're just waiting for, waiting for the legal USB-C to, to figure that out and take right. it out of the rules. Right. But even when you get, some people get really leery. Uh, people that have thrown pro pins love them. Sometimes they only buy pro pins from that point out because it allows them to use longer placements, which can give you more length. Yeah. And some of the higher rev players or higher average bowlers that have a lot mm -hmm. on the ball want to throw high performance stuff but they still want to get all the skid so those are good good ideas but as you can see here the the cg is down much closer to the mass bias but you just you work with your distance from your positive axis point for the pin and then you work with where you want that key or mass bias and you just you figure out your static weights after you're done right now, i've seen a few of these pro pins they have a great length but they also have really good back end right 
right? Where you can get sometimes, sometimes as you get that pin higher, uh, higher up from your grip, it does sometimes create more angularity, right? And you'll get the ball to the break point, and it'll just flip off that break point stronger. So that's we do get a lot of requests, and you'll you'll hear a lot of people ask for longer pins now yeah. because they like getting it up above their fingers, right? Now I'm about to say when you get a ball, a shorter pin, you're, those are still still gonna be able to work with those as well, um, depending on what you want the ball to do. Shorter right. pins may work extremely well for certain lane conditions. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think, I hope that answers your questions. If, if you want more specifics on these topics, feel free to let any of us know. Yeah. Uh, we can either bring it up on the show or answer you directly. Right. A lot of times we, we answer people through Twitter and email and through comments on TalkBalling.com. Right. Um, we, I strongly, or I use Twitter almost every day. I think we all do. Uh, <coughs> Twitter.com slash John Condon. Slash Tony Rucco. Twitter.com slash B. Halstrom. And we'll let it slide today. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we have? Well, today I wanted to talk about a special promotion around the matter of Global Bounty. Okay. Now, this is actually a very unique promotion, very cool. Purchase a bounty. It's a <coughs> matter of Global product. You shoot a 300 with the bounty. You actually win a share of $25,000. Right, and not only that, but your ball driller gets a share of it as well. That's right. So. Something to keep in mind, that I know sometimes pro shops aren't that excited when you bring in a ball from the internet, but if the pro shop drills a bounty for you and you shoot a 300 with it, he gets a piece or he or she gets a piece of that right. of that 25000 as well. Exactly. And last I looked, the number was still pretty high. It was still uh, quite a bit. I think it was just under $1,000 last I looked. I think so. That was going out to each person. So. Do we know when this ends? When is um, mid-April. Check the show notes to be so sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll put in the show notes and we'll uh, provide some, some more information on that. Right. Now, 900 Global, well, we just added to the site within the past few weeks. Right. Now, they've got a full line of balls right now. They've got the Break S75, Bounty. They've got a lot of other products. Yeah, I think there's a Break there. and a Break Pearl. Right. Uh, they're all on the site. If you're interested in 900 Global, check back regularly. We're going to do some ball testing on those balls. So we'll have some videos up, some reviews up. Uh, from what we've seen so far, though, the product is very good. Definitely. Uh, we have some new releases you want to talk about? Yes. Yeah, now is that time of year when all the manufacturers get together and say, we're going to bring out some new balls for everybody that wants new balls. So, <coughs> got, go. got a few coming out here. We'll start off with Ebonite. Ebonite has the One Pearl, which is uh, another ball they added to the One line, very popular line. And this ball is currently available. You can get it now. Okay. Uh, the next ball that they have scheduled is called the Magic. This ball is, I believe, the new high performance ball is coming out on February 3rd. So, you can pre-order pre it right now. And it is available, so once it gets to February 3rd, we'll ship it out to you. You'll be the first one to have it. Newest ball coming up from the Hammer is the Hot Sauce Pearl. This is building off the sauce line, right. obviously. Right, and this ball is available on February 3rd as well. Columbia 300 is coming out with a new high performance ball called the Power Swing. So this ball looks pretty strong. Yeah, it looks like the uh, another good addition to their, their high performance line. This ball is available on January 22nd. And Actually, we have New Brunswick ball sitting right here that is available on January 19th. They're coming out with two new balls. This one's called the Wild Ride. This one is available for pre-order right now, and they're also going to have another one that are more of a BVP line. Right. It's going to be in that series. Called the Rattler. This will be also available January 19th. And last but not least, Storm is coming out the new release sometime mid-February. So, I'm not going to tell you what they're coming Look out for that. with. It'll be out mid-February, keep your eyes out. So and make sure you turn your U.S. Bowler magazine to the back cover. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's all we got for new releases coming out this month and next. Okay. We, just, we got in a huge shipment of Circle Shoes last week yes. and added those to the site. Uh, they're currently on promotion for anywhere from 20 to 40% off our regular everyday low price. That's right, so if you're in need of shoes, this is, this is going to be your place to get them. Yeah, for a complete list of those shoes, you can go, if you go onto our homepage, there will be an icon right underneath our flash ad section. It right. says Circle Shoes, and that will give you a complete list of what's on sale. Exactly. Highly recommend it for anybody that open bowls, even if you're not on a league. You know, the, the shoes that they have on the counter, people step in water, yeah. Yeah. Pe people wear them. Plus, <laughs> if, if you do the math on that, and you, if you pay, I don't know, in our area, it's two, three bucks for a rental. You do that a few times, I think, at some of these prices, you'll... Pay for it in a couple of weeks. So exactly. Definitely the way to go. So there's a lot of different lines. I mean, we've got the entry level, and there are also some high performance shoes. Definitely. There as well. There's a really good high performance shoe circle has that, that a lot of people don't know about, but it's called the Elite, and it's a shoe worth checking out. Definitely. I think that's all. That's all I got for us today. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that.
Can we have him stop for now? Well, unless you want to. <laughs> Is that going to come through? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Uh, you're going to call. I'll oh, just call Steve. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Hopefully he's not hurting himself up there. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, can you have them stop for like 15 minutes upstairs? They're right over where we're shooting. I'll, I'll come out and tell you when we're done. Thanks. <laughs> That's an outtake for sure. <laughs> Dong, dong, dong. <laughs> Jolly Green Giants up there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I saw your bumper sticker yesterday that you won't appreciate, but it said, a taxpayer voting for Barack Obama is like a chicken voting for Colonel Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's a good one. Try to figure it. I don't get it. Because... Obviously, Colonel Sanders isn't very good for chickens. Okay. Come on, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a good one. I got a good chuckle.